Hi, this is Go. I have with me here a year 2019 Toyota Arus X variant. And then in this video, we're going to see what this car is all about. Okay, Toyota Arus was launched on the 15th of January uh, 2019. So, uh, Toyota actually has uh, two variants of this car, which is uh, this one, which is the X variant. And then the other one, which is the AV, the advanced variant, which is the full specs. All Toyota Arus. Uh, so in Malaysia comes with a keyless fob like this, keyless entry, and uh, they, and they also come with only one uh, choice of transmission, which is a four-speed automatic transmission. Okay, so let's unlock this car and see what it is all about. You can use the key fob to unlock the car by pressing this button here to unlock. Okay, pressing once, unlock the uh, driver door only. Then this one remains locked and also the tailgate remains locked okay so the tailgate cannot be opened okay so lock the car <coughs> you can also use this button here to unlock so pressing once unlock the driver door and then uh, if you want to open all the doors so uh, unlock back the car so you can press it two times like this okay pressing second time opens all the doors you can lock the car, lock back, and then if you want to use this button instead uh, to open all the doors, so press it two times. Okay, so okay. However, if you have unlocked it once, press this button, unlock. Then you then I say, ah yeah, the rest of the door unlock, unlock. The rest of the door remain locked. So to open them, you can use this down here, press it two times. Okay, to unlock all the doors. Okay, lock back. Then, the tailgate. The tailgate has an extra feature. If the car, the car is now locked. Okay. So, lock. Lock. Huh? Car is now locked. Okay, if you want to unlock your tailgate. And so that somebody near to the car can open and put things into the boot or you can do is stand from far press and hold this button down here you need to press it for more than one second okay so approach the car the person can and can then lift up the tailgate manually however the rest of the doors remain locked so you do not have to unlock all the doors so that just to allow somebody to put something into the uh, the tailgate into the boot space okay and once you close the boot then okay it locks back by itself okay and this one too locks okay yeah. i'm pressing the button to only to to lift up the lap the, the tailgate but it doesn't open Another alternative is you can walk up to the car with the key fob near you and then press the button underneath the Peroda badge. Okay, and you can still lift out the tailgate like that, put things into the boot. And while you are doing this, the door the, the rest of the doors remain locked. Okay, once you have done, you can just put the Close back the gate, the tailgate. Then the turn signal blink one once, uh, indicating that once you close the tailgate, uh, it is locked. Uh, it's still unlocked because uh, I'm very close to the car actually. See, I'm actually this is quite close to the car, so whenever I press this, it will actually, uh, you actually go and unlock. Okay. I stood too close to the car itself actually. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the rest of the aspect of this car itself. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you how to access this Porodwa Arrows or any other any Porodwa cars that have uh, key fobs like this when the battery has gone weak. Okay, uh, so I just press the button. The battery actually has gone weak because there's no... Uh, the red LED doesn't light up. Okay, so there's always an emergency key in the back of the key fob. So this is the latch. So uh, I made it easier by putting a ring around the, the key itself. So I can re release it with one hand. 
So shift the shift the VD slash up, pull up the key. Okay, then use this key to open up the car. So insert the key into here. Okay, turn it this way. Then you open up the car. Then you only have a few seconds to get into the car because the, the thing is beeping. Okay, put the key fob, put the foot on the brake, put the key fob on the start stop button, and then push the push the uh, button with this key fob itself. So once you push it in, the, the car, the engine will start up, and uh, once the engine starts up, the alarm will disable. Uh, the, yeah, the, not disabled, the alarm will be turned off. Then we can drive to, to other product service center or any other accessory shop to have the battery in the key fob replaced. Uh, the battery in the key fob is actually a CR23, uh, CR2032, like this. So CR2032. So please refer to my other video uh, to see how to replace the battery in the key fob. Okay, this car comes with uh, comes with 17 inch rim. The tire size is 215 60 series for 17 inch rim. The front, uh, the front gets ventilated disc brakes, and then the rear gets drum brakes. Okay, so there's a LED. Uh, LED reflector headlamp for this car is located in there. It's a bit difficult to see from my angle. This is actually your position lamp. And then down here is your front turn signal. Um, there's front parking sensor on this car. There are no fog lamp. Uh, for all X variants, do not have X variant all do not have fog lamp. Only the AV uh, variants come with fog lamp. Okay, there is a turn signal in the mirror down in the back of the front side uh, mirror like this and then the back we have your rear combination lamp together with your turn signal and your reverse lamp down there okay so let's open up the car and see the inside of this car itself so unlock unlock all the doors okay to release the hood this is the lever down here Pull this lever to reduce the hood. Okay, then this is where the product batch is. Put your finger up here and feel for the release latch. I'm gonna need two hands to do that, so I'm gonna lift up the. I'm gonna lift it up. Uh, I'm gonna pause the video for a while so that I can lift up the hood. Okay, what I've just done is I have actually put my finger in here, release the latch. And then this is where the support bar was. I lift it up and I put it in there. The engine in this car is a 2NRVE Porodua's new 1.5 liter engine. So this is the same engine that powers the Porodua MyV 1.5, and it's also the same engine that powers uh, its its high its uh its siblings, which is the Toyota Rush. Okay, so this Porodua. Uh, Arrows is rear view drive from the position of the engine itself. So the engine is positioned this way. Okay, you have, a, you have your fuse box in here. You have your brake fluid reservoir. You have your battery. Okay, this is the dipstick to pull out to check the engine oil level. That one down there is a dipstick to check your uh, automatic transmission fluid. Okay, you have your your main uh, radiator res your main radiator with fuel cap is down here. Then the radiator is actually quite far down there. You cannot quite see la. Okay, this the the best there is the radiator uh, sorry the radiator reserve tank. This is the filler for your engine oil. Okay, and then the ABS pump is this one down here. Okay, the washer fluid reservoir is this one. So this pretty much covers the uh, car itself. So um, <clears throat> for those who are familiar with the Porodua MyV, uh, they will probably be looking at the engine from this angle itself because Porodua MyVs are front wheel drive, so the engine is placed uh, this way. 
then Toyota Arus is back wheel drive so it had to be put that way okay so those of you who are familiar with MyV you probably see the engine uh, 1.5 engines from this uh, from this uh, direction itself okay so let's close it up and go to the inside of the car okay so you have your door open and closed lever this is this one locks and unlocks the door but we but uh, for this car itself we do not lock and unlock from here instead we use a button on the dashboard which i'll cover later it's a holder down here and some and it's also yeah you can put something in here some people put small small items into this part here then this one is your window control it's your power your no window control this is a mirror control side mirror control this is the window control down here power window control so four power window you have a speaker you actually have two bottle holders down here and um, some extra storage down there this part here is fabric this part here has some uh, molded plastic with some pattern down there okay so then this car comes with eco stop start uh, mode so this and this button turns on and turns off the eco stop start this button turns on and turns off the traction control this one down here adjusts the, uh, the head beam leveling okay so head beam leveling is set manually on this car itself it's the engine start stop button because this car is actually a uh, keyless keyless entry so it comes with a engine start stop button itself okay a little bit down from the push start button there is another device down there so this is what you call the smart tag reader so what I did was I just slide in the smart card, uh, touch and go card into here. Then there's a beeper down here. So each time I pass underneath the the smart tag reader, it will detect the band, the tow, the tow fare from the card itself. Then press this button here to check the amount on the card. So the amount is uh, this is the amount on the card itself, 173 cents. So this is the uh, card reader. So this card reader is similar to um, those on Perodua Maybe 20, uh, 2018, the third generation Perodua Maybe, some of them have got this card, the card reader is down here. So this is similar one down here. So Perodua Arus X and AV actually has this uh, card reader. Okay, and on the seat, there's a driver seat down here. So you have head restraint. This one here adjusts the seat back. This one increases and decreases the seat height. So you do it this way to reduce the seat height push it down like that then to increase the seat height just pull it up like this then there's a bar underneath the seat here to adjust the seat position okay uh, to fire up the car so foot off the brakes this is what I normally do foot off the brakes press the start button two times pressing it one time pressing it one time it will bring the car to ACC mode Okay, then pressing a second time, turns it on, on position, then foot on the brakes, start up the car like that. So this way is a little bit long-winded because I want to protect the ECU of this car from bump starting. Okay, so this, so this is the instrument cluster for the car itself. Okay, so you have your tachometer. And together with several other warning lights down here. So namely right now what I can see is the parking brake is on. And then that is your fuel gauge together with your eco meter. And then there's a trip. Uh, this one down here I set to trip meter actually is uh, should be like this. Okay, uh, here it should be like this. So there's the odometer. Or the, actually in fact this whole center part here is your multi-info display. Then your speedometer is on the right hand side. This car has clocked 11,602 kilometers. There's only one lever to adjust down here uh, to uh, adjust the display of the uh, of this uh, multi-info display. So uh, this so pressing it once, it will show the trip meter. So the trip the trip meter is used to count uh, how far you have traveled. Uh, for your one single trip so the last time 
uh, I reset it then I travel 27 and a half kilometer so if you want to begin a fresh count just press this one hold it down to reset the trip meter so trip meter reset to zero you will begin a fresh count from here okay pressing one more time this is the average fuel consumption so average so this car has average 8.4 uh, kilometers per liter because it, last night I tried it out I'm going to reset it then I've been driving around this uh, this area here so <coughs> hence the low uh, the low average fuel consumption down here this car average this car accordingly last night as I picked it up from the from the renter and I took it back drove it across and drove it on the highway so this car clocks about 13 to 14 kilometers per liter average fuel consumption Okay, so you can reset the figure by pushing this lever down here. Then the, the figure becomes uh, double dash like that kind. Then you have to drive a car around and get back the information. So you probably have to drive about 5 or 6 kilometers before the average fuel consumption computer can be can calculate the average value. <coughs> Pressing one more time. This one will be of course zero uh, because the car is not moving. This is called current fuel consumption. It shows in kilometer per liter so the higher the, the figure the better the fuel consumption is okay so uh, car not moving so nothing pressing one more time this will return this will show the range then that, that means if that car kind of fuel this car can still travel 347 kilometers before it need to be refueled pressing one more time this is actually the eco stop start timer uh, since I've started up the engine so if I stop press if I press on the brakes and stop the, the car turns off itself and then uh, turns it back on the timer would calculate how long I have stopped in this trip okay so this one can be reset by pushing the lever down and hold it down okay so pressing another time this one it still shows the uh, how much time your car has stopped okay but this one is Overall, if you see down here, there's an ODO down there. It's, uh, actually, it's called odometer for uh, in, for engine stop start. So this one, um, this one, this figure here, or uh, this this number down here, is permanent. Not permanent. It's cumulative. That means, uh, uh in regard is it starts to count from the time you reset the figure until you reset the figure again. So that means if you halfway you turn off the engine and then you turn it back on again, uh, this figure will not go back to zero. This figure will stay there until you press this button to reset to zero. So this one is cumulative uh, engine stop start timer. And then which is the previous one compared with this one, this one, this figure resets to zero every time uh, every time you you turn on the engine. Okay, so then it's the cumulative versus, uh, sorry, there's a single versus cumulative equal stop start. Go. Okay, there is another one more functionality of this uh, this lever down here. So when we so we leave it at odometer, and we push the lever, we hold it down. So once you hold down, it will display eco mode. Eco mode is now eco mode is now on, so therefore we see the uh, display down here. If you don't like it, you can turn off the eco mode. I doubt anyone is going to turn off the eco mode. That means by turning off the eco mode, you are actually disabling the uh, you actually disabling the eco mode itself. Okay, so eco mode is now off. Okay, if you leave it too long, it comes back to odometer again. So if you want to go back there, press again, hold it down, eco off. And press it one more time again it will now show display uh, engine stop start so it's currently on uh, from the factory is on uh, you can turn it off by pressing and hold it down to off and then pressing a third time this one here is your service level interval so this car need this car has to travel has or has got 8433 kilometers to go before I need to refuel I say before I need, I need servicing, not 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 refuel. Sorry, yeah. Uh, before I need servicing. Okay, so press it down again to go back because I kept it too long. Okay, so eight thousand four hundred thirty-three. If you want to reset it, you can just press it down here like this. Okay, 
then it will be clear that means clear away press it down again it will oops okay press it down again it will, it will refresh back to 10,000 km so be very careful when you reset this kind of figure because sometimes uh, you uh, you might forget how far you need to go before you need you need to uh, service your car but actually Parodon service will actually give you a sticker like this to remind you when you need to service your car but let's put it back because uh, let's put back everything because I found this car with uh, with with the setting on okay so press it down to change to eco on and then the display off uh, press it down hold it down you turn back to on afterwards and then when you see the word end press and hold down it will return you back to autometer so that's how you uh, that's all the features with regarding the uh, multi-info display which is up there okay let's proceed with the other aspects of the car itself okay so you have the main blower down there this is the main blower for the middle passenger this one turns on and turns off the uh, hazard sign and then for the driver side there's a main blower down here this blower is actually to deliver cold air to the air condition to the rear air condition so that means uh, this is the intake for the rear blower for the rear passenger blower so it takes the cold air from from this part from this uh, blower down here so if i turn on the air condition okay you can hear the sound of uh, the air blowing out on the microphone itself okay so that's so this the this this one for you to blow the uh, cold air into this one into the rear blower there's your front screen demister down there okay you have your uh, touch screen player down here that supports uh, USB okay USB you can play movies you can play songs with this player itself and then this player also come with Bluetooth we can tie the microphone you can uh, once you pair your phone to it you can speak through the this microphone here to talk to the to talk to the, your friend or whoever on the other end of the line a little bit down you have your uh, buttons down here so this button this one is just to alert you that the passenger hasn't put on the seat belt so these are the lights down here so these are the rear passenger who hasn't put on the seat belt so none of none of the seat belt are on are being put on in fact there are nobody actually yeah. so that's why so that's why uh, it says okay third row a uh, middle row and and third row no one has buckled up okay but if we put the car to drive hand brake goes down this light this light is going off this light should turn off uh, after a while okay this one locks and unlocks the door so this press here unlock okay pressing this one locks the door this one turns on and turns off the fan parking sensor so fan parking sensor is on and then this one here is your uh, your climate control for the car itself these two buttons down here controls the uh, temperature okay and then this one turns on and turns off the air conditioning so let's let's let, let's put it up let's turn it on a little bit okay so this one turns off the air conditioning you can hear the fan still blowing on the microphone but it's actually not cold air already eh? the air condition has already been turned off now now uh, listen to the uh, aircon compressor coming online when I press this button okay aircon compressor comes online this one activates the fan demister okay uh, no more air coming up from here you can hear no, no more sound eh? this one also no more eh? but it's coming up from over there okay this one turns on and turns off the rear demister this one con changes the mode of the air conditioning so now it's blowing up from the main blower and from the floor blower the floor blower i've seen is that one down there the floor blower there should be one more on this side but it's too dark to go down there okay so that is the part so pressing another time this is floor blower only pressing one more time this is floor blower and fun demister 
Okay, pressing one more time, returns back to main blower only. So there are two memory down here, memory one and memory two. I have programmed memory one, so the minute I press memory one, it returns it turns to this setup. I have configured this is the this is the cooling and then this is the fan speed for the for memory one itself. So fan speed is actually controlled by these two figures down here. So it increases the speed. And then this one decreases the 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 fan speed. And then this one turns on and turns off the recirculation. That means press down here, recirculation off. We are taking in fresh air from the outside. And then if you are driving in the city, you might just want to press this one to turn on the recirculation uh, mode down here. Now if you are traveling on the expressway, uh, it is it is uh, advisable to turn to turn on the to turn to have fresh intake. Um, a fresh air intake to the car when you're traveling on the expressway every about one hour one hour you turn on about maybe 10 20 minutes uh, turn it on to get fresh air into the car advisable to get fresh air from the outside once in a while you're traveling on the expressway okay memory one i've already set so this memory one memory two i have not set at all so pressing memory two you see nothing down here so i can set memory two maybe i want it like this Okay, then I press and hold down. Then it shows number two blinking. Okay, it means that this is memory two. Memory two has been set. Okay, I can toggle between the two settings like that and like that. Okay, to change memory one, just set the configuration that you want. Press and hold it down again. Okay, then memory one has been overwritten. So memory one, memory two. Okay. Now, if you are adjusting, uh, and then suddenly you see, hey, number one appear. Number one appear means uh, this configuration is actually memory one. If I do like this, you see now mem number two show up. So I mean, this configuration is actually memory two. Memory one, memory two, like that. Okay, let's set to memory one as not to disturb the microphone. Um, on this is the X variant, so there is one power outlet down here, and then there is a USB uh, port down here for charging purposes. So USB port is for charging purposes, and then this two, this one down here is a blank off panel. So um, the advanced variant or the AV variant uh, will have one more extra uh, outlet down here, which is a HDMI outlet. Okay, there's some little storage space down there between uh, in front of the gear shift lever and then this gear shift lever is uh, what I what um, what I call the jagged gear but the actual correct term uh, is not the jagged gear this one is called the gated automatic transmission gated meaning that there's no button on the gear shift lever so you see down here no no button no button and no button on this side either okay so you shift the gear by you shift the gear by putting the phone on the brake and change it like uh, like some uh, Toyota cars uh, like Toyota Vios uh, 2008 I think 2007 2008 they have they have the the gear like that kind one okay so put the phone so this transmission is locked uh, down here so uh, once you put your once you put your gear shift lever to P, the gear is actually locked. You have to put your foot on the brakes to be able to release the gear to go to other uh, ranges. It's reverse, neutral. This is uh, four speed mode. This is three speed mode. This is uh, second gear and low gear this way. Then for the rest, we just have to uh, shift it back this way. So this is called the gated transmission gated automatic transmission there is a shift lock down here in case uh, your engine cannot be started okay turn off the engine okay turn off the engine already okay even though with my foot on the brake the gear cannot be shifted out from its P position so unless I press this button press this button so you have to shift the car out from, from uh, parking to neutral so that your car can be shifted or pushed out of, out of danger. So 
one hand press the lever and uh, button and then the other hand shift it to neutral okay behind the this part here there is some little storage so a handbrake lever down here and after that you have got three cup holders down here cup holder bottle holder down there on the passenger side you have the the handle to open the door you also have the door lock down there this grip power window switch speaker two bottle holder and some storage which is uh hidden down there itself okay you have a glove box in the front quite generous space glove box then there's an assist grip for the front passenger and lower this one down and then there's a vanity mirror like a uh, lighted up vanity mirror for the passenger itself and then the warning for airbag so it's down there up here you have a uh, storage with some light storage uh, the the weight limit for this storage is only 200 grams so be careful not to put too heavy things up there this one is your light your mat reading lamp for the front uh, passenger and also the driver and then this one is a, has a switch to toggle between door and off if you put to off yeah you can still turn on yeah you can still turn on but if you open the door if you open the door the light don't don't light up okay if you put to door mode and then when you open the door the light comes on again this is the difference between door mode and off mode then this is the vanity this is the sun shape for the driver the driver also do have uh lighted up vanity mirror so you can look at yourself down here like this and with the lights on there are no assist grip for the for the driver side okay now back to the steering the steering view so the left stock actually is for wiper control and then the right hand side stock is for uh, lights with your light control okay let's start with this one first so uh, your headlights can be turned on by turning this one this way okay and then turn signal normal huh? okay normal huh? turn signal huh? now if you lift up this one a little bit just like that okay the turn signal blink three times to the left because i lift it up and if i push it down the right hand side turn signal blink three times this is what we call a lane change feature so lane change feature you have this way so just like every other Porodua cars you have the lane change features okay so once you turn on the the head beam uh for high beam push the lever down for high beam pull it up to turn back to normal beam and then pull the pull the lever towards you to high beam even with the lights off uh, you can still flash the high beam by doing this way high beam can still be flashed out this one actually controls the wiper so i'm going to demo the wiper uh, so wiper is quite standard uh, down here okay i lift up the wipers and i have also lift up the wipers at the at the rear window okay so wiper if you push it just like every other Porodua cars so if you push it up the wiper activate one time so this is what you call uh this is to use to clear the water away from the windscreen if you want to if you don't want to on your wiper uh, constantly so you can just lift it up like that to get it to clear up so one one latch down this one actually uh it turns on the intermittent wiper and if i push it down it's constant okay and then this one down is fast okay so i can't hold the fast too long because i the last time i did that this one slammed against the windscreen okay Porodua Arrows has a feature just like the, every other car itself so uh, let's say I'm driving forward my wipers are on intermittent okay uh, let's wait for the wiper to, to wipe, wipe the screen okay wiper wipe ready huh? now I, I shift it to reverse now you keep watch on the rear wiper which is that little bar up there okay so you notice that the rear wiper actually activates three times or run three times or three sweep so there is a feature where if you if your front wipers are activated 
and then okay you drift forward a little bit then if you put to reverse okay the rear wiper activates three times just like that okay so the rear wiper activates three times this is just to sweep the windscreen the rear windscreen clean to uh, assist you to reverse your car so you get a clear view out of your rear windscreen okay uh, after this uh, I will I will demonstrate the uh, what they call it the automatic intermittent uh, uh, wiper that means the interval uh, between the wiper strips uh, correspond to the speed of the car so I will demonstrate to, to you to this uh, when it's near nearly the end of this video when I take it up for the drive so wiper feature uh, for now just leave it like that to splash water onto the front windscreen just pull the lever towards you like this okay then the wiper will follow by a few sweep on the wiper to clean up the windscreen then to flash the water to splash water to the back of the car okay what you want to do is just push the lever backwards like this okay however the wiper doesn't run so you have to manually turn on the wiper to sweep it manually like this okay and when you're done just uh, just turn it off okay the rear wiper has a has a mode like this which is uh, intermittent so you can see intermittent okay intermittent all right and then turn it this way for continuous movement okay all right okay we will continue to look at the other aspects of this car after this okay so this is the rear view mirror of the car itself so this is daylight mode so if you look at it it's quite bright down there then if it's driving at night if, then if the car behind is actually flashing at you so you can actually shift this lever here to look at night mode so this is the night mode so night mode not so bright already lah. okay so on the camera it appears brighter but because that's a camera huh? okay so this is night mode this is daylight mode so daylight mode you can see even brighter the outline cannot be made then if i use night mode you can still see the outline of what i'm looking over there so this is for night mode this is for daylight mode okay now uh being the x variant so there is a uh, audio control on the there's audio control down here um this steering view is also silver painted the silver is actually quite shining uh, compared to uh those on the axia so it's quite shining so yeah it looks quite nice down here uh steering view for the x variant is uretine steering view there's so um uretine steering view all over the steering view on the Perodo arrows is still adjustable so all you have to do is just locate the, the switch down here okay locate the switch now down here and then uh pull it up to release and then adjust the, the steering accordingly and then when you have found a comfortable position you can lock it by doing this push all the way to the bottom so that's how you adjust the uh the tilt adjustable steering on the arrows all right so that's the case then uh next feature is the side mirror so the side mirror can be adjusted by turning this way for left and then turn this one for right Okay, I'm going to use the right hand side mirror because it's just uh, out there so select the mirror let's say I select the right mirror then I can adjust the mirror uh, by pushing the thing this way for right left up or down so right left up and down that way then to lock it up just push back to the center and then once in the center, lock already lah, cannot be adjusted. So you see, uh, I can, can't even push. Uh. Okay, once you lock in the middle, this, this button has become locked dead, so you cannot push at all. This one here is to fold in the side mirror, so press it one time, mirror folds in. The other side too, uh, mirror folds in. Uh. Okay, mirror folds out. And then this one here controls your power window, so... The driver power window is one touch movement, so press one time, opens, and then 
to lift it up, pull it up to lift it. Then it closes uh, automatic. So it's a one touch movement. But however, for the passenger side, you have to hold it up to close and push it down to open. So you need to pull it up to close it up. Um, this, uh, this power window actually comes with the jam mechanism. Okay, so that means if the, if the, if the window closes up and there's an obstruction, maybe somebody put a hand out or put something out, the window will know how to stop uh, upon the obstruction. Okay, so let's continue to the rear of the car to see the extra features. Okay, now uh, I've come to the back of the car. So on the back door, you still have the uh, lever like that, the door lock, power window switch, a little grip for closing the door and then uh, you can also put small small objects into there. So there's only one, uh, there's one bottle holder down there with the uh, some storage and then there's a speaker down there. Then uh, the front passenger seat comes with a hook like this. Okay, and then there's a door pocket on this side and uh, that one over there too. Okay, so there's a door pocket like this. Something folded in. Okay, so there's a shopping hook down here. The seat on this Polo Duan Arrows can be adjusted so manually. So this the uh, so this is the the lever to adjust the seat back. And then underneath the seat there is a, a bar to adjust the seat position. So pull up this one and adjust the seat uh, forward or backwards. Okay, so to so the same way, this seat can be lowered too and fold down like this and can fold it up like that. So this one can be done uh, similar to that side over there. I have uh, adjusted the seat. <coughs> so this is as far forward the seat can go. And that one over there is as far back as the seat can go in the uh, in this car itself. So one is that one is maximum to the back. This is maximum to the front. The rear seat on this Porodora Arrows can be fold down by pulling up this lever here like this. And after that, do not forget to uh, stow the headrest like this. And then lift it up and it, and it anchors into place like that. Then the passenger can then enter the rear seat. So that's the rear seat and also that's the height of the rear seat itself. Okay, and then this one here. This is the just the anchor the the anchor anchor for the ISO uh, child seat to lower the seat just lower down like this and then lift this one up and then push this bar to adjust the the, the seat so the seat can be as tilted as far back as like that okay so this is the angle of the seat itself the the rear seat, the rear middle seat passenger belt is located on the roof, on the rooftop up there like that. So all you have to do is just pull up this one and release this one too. So there are two buckle actually. There's one larger one and there's a small one. So on your seat you have this. You have one, uh, you have one uh, buckle which is uh, black without a button. So put this one into here and then. For this one, locate the one that says center. This one that says center. So center, yeah, this one. This one says center. So this one goes into here. So this becomes the uh, the three point seat belt. One up there, two down here, and three down here. To release, just press this one. And then for this, this one doesn't have a doesn't have a button, so there, there is a slot down here. So all I have to do is just grab this one and then push it into the slot like this. Okay, to release. So just push this into the slot. After that, store the belt by putting this one in here and then uh, actually you need to pull out longer a bit. So this one anchors into here like this and then this one slot into the hole above 
you need to see from this side, uh, slot into the hole, slot into this hole. Uh, I need both hands to do this, so I'm going to stop the video and attach it properly. Okay, uh, it's now properly secured. Um, I'm seated at the middle row. Okay, so the seat is uh, as far back as possible. I only have that kind of space between the the seat and my knee. However, I have space between here and here from the top of my head to up there. Okay, so if you look at the seat, it's not much of a space like this. Like this kind of space only like, between the my knee and the front. I'm 178 centimeters tall, so this is how this is uh, as much space as I can get. Okay, so there is a USB port down here. It's quite dark to see. Okay, so there's a USB port into here. This is for use for the rear passenger to charge up whatever device that they have. So there's a cover. There's a USB port. Okay, so there's a USB port down there. And then there's an anti snatch hook down here, like this. So, if we are a woman driver, if you're afraid that people might break the windscreen and pull away or steal away your handbag, so what you can do is you can strap your handbag to the gap down here. So, first, what you need to do is press this button and lift up this cover. Then you can strap the handbag into here and then close by pushing this one down. So, it's quite hard to, for it to come off. The weight is 3 kilograms. So does this uh, setting down here. This is also 3 kilogram weight limit. Okay, this is the rear passenger air conditioning. So you can turn it on by pushing this lever here like this. Uh, the car is not turned on, so there's no air condition down here at the moment. Let me just uh, turn on the car, turn on the air condition and come back. Okay, I've turned on the air conditioning and also the car. And then down here, uh, put this one to turn on the air condition. You can hear the sound from the microphone right now okay so rear air conditioning for the car itself okay uh, this one you will only blow cold, cold air because I have turned on the air conditioning and it's getting the cold air from that outlet over there you will blow through the rear of this and then come out this side as cold air uh, bear in mind uh, this is just blower only uh, it's just blower only it's not a separate air conditioning, these are just blowers. Okay, however, there's one thing I discovered. Uh, now, now you can hear the blower is there. Okay, if I go and turn that one off, is this one gonna go off too? Okay, I have off the air con in front. Okay, it's already gone off, huh? So no more no more air blowing up from there. So this one can only come on if that one is on. Okay. Okay, so this is the rear, the back seat. So there's a thickness of the back seat down here. Then the back seat actually has a lever down here like this. So push it down, you can actually lower the seat like that. This one too, you can just push it down. You can lower the seat like that. Then to raise the seat up, there's a lever underneath here like this. Okay, pull this lever to raise the seat up like that. Okay, so this one also the same. Huh? There is a lever for you to pull and then lift up the seat. Okay, but because that seat is all the way to the back, so this one this one cannot cannot go in there. Like it, will, it will crash into the seat in front. So because that seat is actually furthest to the back. There is another feature once you there's another use of this. So once you have already pulled this one up like this, sometimes uh, during vehicle movement this can come crashing down. Okay, so to prevent this from crashing down, take this one, anchor here. That means, pull out this one from here, pull it out, anchor into up there. So once you have anchored it like this, pull it tight, then lock it up. So this one will now won't come crashing down. So you can actually securely hold up the seat by using that strap down there. And this strap also can be adjustable one. Huh? So that means, uh, if you have released it, this strap also can be, the length can be adjustable by twisting it 90 degree and pulling it, pulling it up or pulling or pulling this one all the way in. 
so this track can also the length of this track can be adjusted so I think it's gonna gone a bit far long lah in that case okay so to lower down just release the release this catch okay once you have released anchor the anchor it back down here lower the seat and then pull this one upwards okay pull this one upwards like this okay so the seat once locked ready that's the position the back also can be adjusted uh, but so i did with two hand one hand push forward one hand pull backward so this is the better inclination compared to this one okay now both the seats are in the fully fully reclined position so uh the seats already back down here like that so to fully adjust push the lever forward with one hand and pull this thing back with the other hand the headrest can be released just can be raised or lower just like uh just like the the front of the front just like the middle row okay so you can release base of the seat the head restraint you can lower the head restraint too like this okay and then uh, push it all the way down if you want to lower the seat similarly to that one down there so the head restraint can be can be raised and can be lowered down okay then for the rear passenger you have a speaker down here and then there is a power outlet on one side only eh? so only this side has power outlet and then there's a bottle holder there's also some storage space for the rear passenger the rear passenger have two seat belts so that means two people can sit here so this seat belt for this side and then the other one this seat belt is for that side this car comes with a hazard signage hazard signage is here there's nothing underneath here because uh, the spare tire is actually located on the on the side of the car you can see in the camera okay and then this is an extra lever for you to pull it down and close up the car the jack and the toolbox is located underneath here so underneath the front passenger so that's the driver seat this is where the the location for the jack and the toolbox is located underneath the front underneath the front passenger seat okay so the front passenger seat had to be put in this position to allow access to the toolbox the, the jack itself the vehicle jack the toolbox is located underneath here so just put a hand in and then underneath here there is the toolbox the tool bag is actually underneath here there. ah you can see from here okay there's a tool bag underneath there okay i've got back into the front of the car uh this car has a reverse camera okay so there's a reverse camera so the green marker indicate that that's a distance three meter from the object uh still safety still safety zone then the yellow part 1.2 meter and then the there are two red lines uh. let me just get the car a bit forward to show it to you okay so there are two uh, red marker one is a one point uh sorry 0 0.6 meter means 60 centimeter and then this is the really really danger zone so that means if the object approaches the car like this you're still okay then that means better stop lah huh? you can still go push your luck until you reach this level until you reach this line so this line is now touching against the the marker on the road so that means if this is a wall uh, your your car is only merely a few centimeters away from the uh, from the wall itself so you have to stop if you don't stop then uh, your the the your car will collide with the whatever obstruction which is at the back of the car itself so this is the line against this is the line where you really really have to put the phone a brake and stop the car immediately because this is the danger zone uh, down here Okay, so this is a danger zone all right so that's the rear the rear camera on this car itself so i'm going to take a short drive in this car to demonstrate uh, the rest of the feature uh, we're going to take a drive in this car and then we're going to see the features of the uh, the wiper out there the intermittent wiper and so we're going to see the feature of the eco mode 
Now, uh, this road, uh, this road is actually, uh, you can see on the mirror, it's actually cordoned off. Uh, so, uh, if you got, so if you anyone out there trying out this, be can be very very careful. Uh, actually, do not attempt this on the on the busy road out there. Okay, so that is the uh, eco mode. So my car is in drive, so I can now drive off. And then at the same time, watch the eco bar. Okay, the eco bar comes on to full to indicate that full eco mode has been achieved. Then if I accelerate, the eco bar goes down a little bit and then comes back up once the constant speed has been achieved. Okay, by now you notice that there's an A on the dash on the meter itself. So the A actually symbolizes the uh, symbolize the uh, eco stop start. So that means if I pull over like this and I put the phone on the brakes, okay, the engine has already cut. So the engine cuts and then the aircon still running. Huh? See, aircon still running. Okay, and then the timer now start to time. Lah. So I've stopped stationary for 10 seconds. So if I turn the steering wheel, the engine starts back up again and I can proceed. So if I reach uh, maybe a stopover or something like that, then the the engine mode, the engine will actually cut off again. So cut off again. Lah. Okay, engine cut off already. So uh, I do not have to go and uh, I can just release the brakes. So when I release the brakes, the eco mode comes on. That's oh, right, the eco stop start. Sorry, the engine comes on again afterwards. Okay, so when I release the brake, the engine comes on. So pressing this button, when I press this button, the 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 light instead of green uh, is now amber. Amber indicate that the eco stop start has been disabled. Okay, so we can begin to drive. If we decide to pull over to have a stop, like this. So pull over. And stop. Okay. Now, because the eco the eco stop start has been disabled, so engine remains on. Okay. The engine didn't cut lah. Okay. Then uh, to turn it back on again, just press the button. The A dis the the eco stop start dis disables or disappears. Okay. The off the sorry the eco stop start. Uh, off light has been has gone off. Then you need to drive around a while uh, until the green light comes back on again. So once the green light comes back on again, you can de then the eco stop start has been reactivated. So that means if you decide to pull over and stop, or maybe you stop in the traffic light right now, okay, the engine will then cut. Okay, engine cut earlier, and then comes back on again. So that's how you disable and activate the. Uh, reactivate the engine, the eco stop start mode down there. Next one will be the uh, automatic intermittent wiper. So if I turn it on, see the timer. Okay, let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, so about seven seconds, ah. Uh. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to drive a little bit faster. The speed is now up to thirty kilometers an hour. So, you see, uh, the timer actually shorter here. Okay, I pull over to a stop. Okay, and you can see now the wiper actually goes more and more frequent. Okay, wiper more frequent already. Eh? So 30, 40, eh? so 40 kilometers an hour. So about 30 kilometers an hour. One, two, three. See, three and a half to four seconds compared to just now, seven seconds. So that's what you call the in the phone the forward intermittent wiper.
Okay, the next feature is I've turned on my headlight. It's a bit difficult to see, so uh, that is where the, the, the headlight level is uh, at the moment. Okay, so currently it's level 3. Okay, so I've pushed to level 0, which is the highest. So now you see the beam now is actually up to somewhere around there. The star was here, it was up there already. Okay, so this is at position number zero. Okay, position zero. Okay, then the max, the lowest you can ever go is position number five. Okay, so position five, if you look out there, position five, okay, is somewhere around there, below that, that uh, below that, that paper okay i shift to position through z3 which is the mid range now mid range uh, just now was below the paper now it's gone past half the paper a bit and then now i go to the highest the highest position is now up there so that's the uh the light uh leveling itself Okay, this car also has another feature where if you leave your headlights on, okay, then turn off the engine. Okay, the minute you open the door, the light turns off itself. So you see, uh, the light uh, the light already turned off. And then, however, if you start the car again, okay, the headlight comes back on. Okay, so you put the phone on the brakes, turn off the engine, open the door. The light turns off so this one can save you uh this one can save you from a, a battery replacement if you forget to turn off your headlight and then you park your car and you just walk away without checking okay so that's the headlight down there i have driven to some place which are which is much darker so you can see now that this is how the Perodon arrows uh, meter illumination looks like at night so there's uh, white versus blue light inter, uh, interleaving okay so there's white light white color there's white color light versus blue color light interleaving in the middle down there so this is uh, how the arrows look like and then this is a center console how the arrows look like at night and then down the gear shift lever all these lights are in amber and then back down there these are all amber except for this one this is green and then this this light is illuminated at all times okay so uh this one is illuminated so unless if you turn off the engine the light goes off so turn it back on, go on again the light comes back on up down there okay and also on the steering on the steering view uh, so steering view buttons are also illuminated at night so the light is off Turn it back again. The lights are actually they are actually lights on the um, on the steering the steering itself to illuminate the buttons. Okay, uh, let's go down and look at the last aspect of the car. That is the with the lights all turned on. Okay, this is how the Arus head beam looks like. So the main beam is up there. Okay, and then uh, this one is your position lamp. So if you turn on the high beam, it's actually this extra light turn comes on uh. So this is your high beam. This is your low, your normal beam. Then to the back of the car. Okay, so your position lamp, your rear position lamp, and then the rest of the lamps are down there. Okay, last but not least, this is the lever to release the, the fuel tank itself. Okay, fuel tank release and then this is how you this, when you open up the fuel tank and then you can anchor the 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 white you can anchor this one down here to prevent this one from slamming against the uh, body itself so you can just anchor this one down here okay so that's the case and then you can put back again after that okay so this is where the this is where the hook where you can so this is where the hook you can hook on the on this cable itself okay so i hope this video really really helps if you like this video please click the please click the like button and click hit the subscribe button 
and also the bell icon to receive any uh, any further updates on my channel so again thank you for watching bye bye